Uh, welcome back to uh, Innovating with Capella. Uh, thank you for subscribing. It's been a while since my last uh, presentation was done uh, with the course Introduction to Capella. Today, I'm going to start talking about an advanced, some advanced lessons, and this is going to be the first of, of a couple of these advanced lessons on using Capella. Uh, this particular one is going to be on exchange scenarios. Uh, exchange scenarios are uh, a w basically another, an alternate way of uh, depicting flow through a model. Um, and in all the different phases, the ex uh, exchange scenarios can be done in operational analysis, structured analysis, uh, logical architecture, and physical architecture. All of them have it. Um, you will see it in this process flow here, define operational process that deliver operational capabilities. You can use exchange scenarios as an alternative to show this flow through uh, the uh, entities or through functions. And so we're going to actually show two examples. I'm going to do an operational analysis example, and I'm going to do uh, basically a physical architecture example. Um, exchange scenarios uh, is an alternate way to depicting flows. It's usually, uh, there's this is one depicting a functional uh, exchange scenarios. So you actually see functions here on top, and you see exchanges, image request uh, is going into the acquire image function, uh, collect images is going to the collaborate elaborate current function current situation so it shows uh, flows and over here is a notation of what the different symbols mean uh, this diagram is usually built after you have done a system architecture diagram uh, because you are leveraging and you can see a lot of these inserts you can insert exchange content you can insert functions so you basically can insert content uh, to, to build this diagram now that's one way of doing it the other way is you can actually build, have the diagram built for you, and then you can modify it. So we'll actually go through that example using that. Uh, you can also do uh, exchange scenarios using entities as the vertical lines. And this is the more common way that people would depict uh, these type, use these scenarios. So here you actually see atmosphere, uh, measurement engineer, forecaster, broadcaster, scientific user. This is the example out of the textbook. And when you're doing it this way, you, again, you, you start with kind of the interactions that flow through the objects. Uh, the interactions are depicted uh, as the things between them. Uh, you also can add the thing when you read this diagram, you read it from top to bottom. So that's actually the time dimension. Uh, and so you'll actually see that you can put in duration. So you can actually say how long it's gonna take from this, this flow here to that flow there with the duration object, which is kind of cool if you're doing that. This is a very common notation uh, for helping people understand maybe how, how software interacts. Uh, and does uh, the uh, activities. And you'll see here uh, that you have interaction with a return, which makes you and kind of implies that you're doing some type of software. Uh, you can also depict states. So another uh, advanced topic is uh, state transition diagrams, but you can use the states from trans state transition diagrams uh, and depict those in this flow. So in consult forecast is a state of the scientific user um, uh, as it goes through the operation. You also can add in looping information loop, alternate paths, parallel processing, uh, and other types of notations can be added to it. So you can enhance the diagram above and beyond what you could do before with the functional chain or the operational process. Uh, so anyway, it kind of gives you an idea. Uh, where did this come from? Other methods have a very similar notation. Uh, UML has something called a sequence diagram. Uh, SysMLV1 also has a sequence diagram. It's a very similar notation to this, uh, pretty much... Uh, uh, identical in how you would use it. Uh, the difference being, though, is that this part, this diagram has a lot of content that is shared by other diagrams, and uh, and you can leverage that content to, to basically do an initialization of the diagram, which I'll be showing here in a minute. So, anyway, um, continuing on. Uh, so basically the steps then to basically do this, I'm going to actually walk through and, and, and execute it. You, you can select the operational process of the functional chain. Uh, then you can invoke uh, an initialization to build the scenario diagram. So you'll actually see me doing that. Uh, then you can navigate to the activity or functional scenario and create, a mod create and modify the diagram. So you actually can create it and then modify it. And then you can actually do this operation again a second time to essentially build the entity uh, relation scenarios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop now and go over to using it in the tool, and I'm going to do two of these. So here's the, the trail power uh, a model that we've used many times before. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do uh, the operational scenarios related to, uh, let's say, 
provides pro provide location for the operator. So it's going to be a very simple scenario because you can see here there's provide location, there's receive location. So this is going to be very trivial, but I'll go ahead through the steps of doing this. So you basically select the operational process in that's depicted in that diagram, and you use this transition operational process to operational activity scenario initialization. initialization. You do that, and then what you need to do is connect this to a capability, uh, which you know you see here all those are the capabilities. Well, of course, that's pretty obvious because that's provide location capability. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the provide location capability, and that's and it's done. Now it doesn't you don't know where it is. That's kind of one of the weird things about this is what happened. Well, it, you connected it to the provide operational capability. That's that was the key part of that. So I'm going to go here and go to operational capabilities. And I'll go to provide location, and you'll see there's the uh, OAS. This is the operational uh, analysis scenario, uh, provide location. Uh, I'm basically going to open up. You can see it has the two has two different lifelines in it, provide location, receive location. Uh, I'm going to basically, I can go at this point in time, select it, and say I want to create a diagram. So here's, I'm going to go and basically create the diagram, and it's called provide location. And there's the, the diagram. So you see very simply, I've created two objects, provide location, receive location. Now those aren't entities, those are functions. And once you have it in this mode, I can modify and edit it, move things around. I can move it up and down. I can add in that duration measurement. So I could put in a duration uh, in it. And uh, if there was two different flows, I could actually do that. Um, and, and I also can put in things like loop and operand. I can add more details. Now those are the similar notations that you'll see for pretty much every other sequence diagram, and this just allows you to, to basically edit those. So, and, and once I have the diagram created, I can and save the diagram just like I would normally do it, close it, and it saves it, and you can see the diagram is right there. Uh, now, what I also can do is I can use that diagram to basically create the entity diagram. So I just do the same process, kind of repeat it again, and I go over here and I say uh, transition, operational activity scenario, do function scenario, or entity scenario initialization that. So now I'm going to just go ahead and, and do that. So now you see the diagram is created. There's an OES uh, denoted on it, seeing that the operational uh, entity scenario. And now I'm going to basically go and uh, create the new diagram for it. And now you see that I have the charger and the operator and the flow going through it. So this is a pretty simple example. So let's go and do a little bit more complicated example. So now we're going to close out of here. And I'm going to go to the physical architecture. And in the physical architecture, I'll go and I'll open up one of the new flows that we had. So there you go, that's the operator flow. So this is a pretty complicated one, as we remember this flow. And so now the flow that I want to do is, uh, I'll do the same one, the provide location flow. So there's the pro provide location. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see, see it. There's provide location. That's definitely this blue flow, provide location. It kind of shows the interactions with it, and how it's going through the Helium cloud out to the PC, all the way to the operator. So um, here's receive location here for the operator. Okay, so now I'm going to go and do the whole process again. Uh, and I say transition uh, functional chain to uh, functional scenario initialization. And again, I get to connect it to a capability, but now this is the physical architecture capability. So I'm going to connect it to provide location. And it, again, it kind of goes away. Uh, where do I find it? As I go to, and then you can, another way to find where it's going to go, this, this is another kind of cute way. Uh, we always have the uh, semantic browser. So if I click on provide location here, you'll see that it actually created uh, an incoming generic trace for the functional chain provide location. So that's another way of finding it. If I do show and show in Project Explorer, look at that. It shows it up underneath the capability. So it's, it's there. So now if I want to go and take that and turn that into a diagram, just like before, I do the initialization. And it creates a diagram. Now, this diagram you can see is a lot more complicated than the last one. <laughs> uh, so it has all the objects brought over. It has all the exchanges. Um, I'm not. 
I don't care too much about this diagram. I want to have the entity one. So I'm going to go ahead and reinitialize for the entity diagram. Here goes functional scenario to exchange scenario initialization. And I'm going to open up that one. I'm going to create a diagram for it. And this then shows, okay, here's the um, GPS. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to organ reorganize this just a little bit to kind of match the flow. And this is where I can say, I, I, you can say I, I can change the model to kind of map with the diagram. But I also have just created, a, done a lot of work that would have been, you know, much more complicated than, than drawing it. So I'm going to start with this GPS because it's on the left-hand side. So I'm going to take the GPS one. I'm just going to drag it, put it over here. Pretty, pretty slick. And then the GPS goes to this Arduino 101 BC. So I'm going to basically move that over here like that. And then that goes to the base station, which we have here. And then that's going to go to the Helium Cloud, which is the cloud. So I'm going to move that over to there. And then the cloud goes to the operator app. So it goes to the, yeah, goes to the, the PC which uh, or the operator app yep so right here the station cloud operator app the operator app then goes to the operator okay so there we go and there is a user involved in this thing too i see there's the user down here move the charger okay very good. So then move the chargers there also. So I'll leave the user where it is. So now I'll go, I'll go and close this. And the only thing you see here is that these flows may not always be exactly what you would expect as far as the flow. And you can move them around. So you can see that the GPS is giving this to a satellite lo location. And this is the motion detection down here. And that's the motion flow. So this is where I said you can go and modify things a little bit. So uh, let's go and do that. So here's the GPS satellite location. Um, we're going to basically win the satellite location. Uh, it's going to this Arduino 101 PC. So I'm going to basically do something like this. I'm going to take this flow here, and I'm going to connect it to that, because that function is going to basically drive this communication to the base station. You can see that it also is working on this, the detecting the motion. It's coming from the user. So there's the motion there. So I'm going to basically do something like this. I'll take this guy and do that with it, kind of showing that the motion is doing something. And, and then that motion object there is also going back to this, this higher level one. So I'm going to take the whole thing then. I'm going to stretch this down, and I'm going to move that on top of it. So that kind of shows a flow then. That would be done. Then this location of chargers, I can move that so that it connects up to that one. And then I can connect that one to, to go to that one. And you see that it gives you a little bit different uh, look at, uh, at things. Uh, so you see here, like, there's a functional chain that I probably should have had a name on, but I didn't. Um, this also can kind of give you an idea of so then now this is the type of thing where you can start having timing can be put onto it. So then, so let's say from the time of motion, I'd want to be able to get this idea of what the location is here. I could go over to this guy and say a duration, and I could say from motion to location, I want to have a duration, and that should be uh, 60 seconds. So that's, that's the type of information I can add to it. So this is a different type of diagram that kind of shows the, the sequence of, of things happening and what they're going through uh, doing the, the sequence. Uh, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, it is a much uh, quicker approach than other methods of doing this because of the fact that I'm actually initializing the, uh, the diagram from a, a, an existing diagram. So it really improves the speed of basically building these. Okay. Uh, and then, so just in summary, uh, thank you for enjoying this little discussion, um, and I hope to have many more like this. Thank you.